headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studio. This is The Ramsey Show. It's where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life, specifically your money, your work, and your relationships. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague George Camel with a K. And we are here for you this hour to take your questions. 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. It's been a great week. Uh, boy, we've had some fun highlights on the show. Uh, I'm thinking of, uh, we took a call from a lady whose boyfriend wanted her to sell her car. That was a wild one, Ken. And buy a truck! Sell his car, sell her car, so he could get a truck. Yeah, I like what he's doing there. That one angered um, me. And then we talked about grocery prices, um, how they're going up, and then how you can react to that the right way. Now it's the eggs, Ken. Oh, yeah, it's the always eggs something new every week. Yeah. Yeah, but you know what? That's got a real benefit, a real health benefit, silver lining there on the eggs. A lot of cholesterol for you? Well, not for me, but just eggs in general aren't the big healthy thing that you think they are. Oh. You remember the slogan we were growing up, milk does a body good? Turns out it doesn't. You know? James looks like he wants to say something. My wife saw something funny online this week that said, back when I was growing up, eggs and toilet paper were so abundant that we used to throw them at our enemies. <laughs> that's good that's a great point I love that yeah Tell TP, wife, TP like the that. tree egg yeah. the house can't yeah. afford to do that in today's well, I society tell you what you're throwing money away now and you egg your teacher's house you Ken, know? this was an interesting call we took a woman whose dad wanted her to get the prenup yeah. to protect the family business that was an interesting one yeah and then a really fun ex- segment about the five things you need to know before filing your taxes boy that's just a ball of joy if anyone can make it fun it's it's me ken we did i think we accomplished it you did so So hey you can check all those out yeah check them out the uh week's podcast episodes on your favorite podcasting platform or on youtube or the ramsey network app so let's get to today i mean that's what's happened so far i just have a feeling today is going to be really good george we just don't know let's see carly starts us off in little rock arkansas carly how can we help I'm good. How are you? Well, I am living the dream, and, and, and I think George is as well. Great. Um, I am wondering if I should quit my job and look for something new. Okay. And uh, you're leaning towards an answer. Before we ever get into your question, what are you leaning towards? Well, I mean, I've been leaning towards quitting for right. a couple months. My mom tells me that I shouldn't because I get, like, they pay for my tuition for school. I'm in school full-time. I work full-time. And it's probably one of the better-paying jobs that I could get in my city. Okay, so now you've explained why mom doesn't want you to quit the job. You just laid out mom's case. What's your reason for wanting to quit? The work environment is not... Like, it's very toxic. There's a lot of drama. Explain and, what is toxic. Give me something specific. I need a couple things. Okay, sorry. Oh, you broke up on us, Carly. Speak directly into the phone. Um, our managers are, they're not really managers. Like, they don't care about what goes on in that office. They don't, they're never present. Whenever somebody brings up an issue, it's never solved. So when you say they're never present... What, what kind never, of workplace is this? Um, it's a telecommunications company. Okay. And what's happening on the floor or in the, the workspace? What, what, what's happening? Um, so um, I'm trying to think of how to explain it. Um, so we have, like, employees that think they're above everybody else. Mm-hmm. And management won't fix that or, like, put a stop to it. Okay. And um, are these employees doing something that is harming you emotionally, mentally, or are they doing something that is keeping you from doing your job? Keeping me from doing my job. And how are they doing that? Um, Like, I'm having to do other people's work, like, which I don't mind. Like, I I love to work, so I don't mind doing that. No, 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 no. You do mind. And so do I. And you should mind. You're putting a really positive spin on it. But if George comes to me and says, hey, Ken, I need you to write the first half of my book, I'm going to go, George, okay, I don't mind. I'm not going to say that. (laughs) Ken, you love to work. I'm going to go pound sand. Go write your own book. Come on, Carly. You do mind it. And let me ask you a question. Who says you have to do their work? Them? Yeah. Yeah. Well, wait a second. Is uh, is your leader, their leader, telling you you have to do their work too? You broke up, Austin. Awesome. You broke up. Come on, Carly. Stay Sorry. with us. 
Uh, no, no. My leader, my boss is not telling me to do it. Okay, so here's my point. I'm not in any way diminishing the fact that you're working in a difficult environment. But right. I don't want you to just quit the best paying job in the area, if that's in fact true, unless we have something better to go to. We don't, I don't want you leaving something. I want you moving towards something. There's a big difference. We, right. we, we, we quit when we are quitting to something better. Out the only the only exception to that is when it's a very dangerous environment and it has to happen today. This is not that. Agreed? Agreed. So I'm okay with you quitting if I'm quitting to something. I am I am I have a clear why. Okay. And you don't have a clear why here. It is difficult. And I am and I'm sorry that you've got poor leadership above you, that they are allowing this environment. I call it bad bossery on the Ken Coleman show, and it's just a disaster, and I'm sorry. But you can handle this. And it starts with you putting some boundaries up with your coworkers by just going, no. No. I'm not going to do your job, and I don't care if you talk bad about me behind my back. George? What would happen, Carly, if you, if you set those boundaries with them? What would the response be? What would the backlash be? Honestly, I have no idea because I've never done that. I'm 19, so I'm like trying to hold on to this job because I have. So you think you'd get fired that, if you said, "Hey, I'm not going to do your work for you"? Well, like I said, like the, it's crazy. Like it, it's so hard to explain how they do things here. Okay, so can you work. replace your income going somewhere else? Not at the moment because I don't have a degree. How much school do you have left? You said they're paying for school. Um, I should graduate in December of 2024. Okay, so we've got uh, basically another two years. Right. And you're saying, I can't stick with this for two years, which means we got to go find another job that can pay as well, if not more, because now we have to cover school, right? If they're not going to cover right. that anymore. And I, so we've got I, some homework. Yeah, I, I, I got to tell you, I, Carly, I'm the first person to tell someone to leave if they're in a truly toxic environment. But I tell them the same thing I'm telling you. Go find something that we have to leave to, then we eject. You don't have that. And by the way, there's probably going to be more problems at the new job. And so it's not all going to magically go away at your next employer. All right, Allie, I'm going to sum this up. Excuse me, Carly. Uh, Callie's on hold. But Carly, you're with us. Listen, here's the theme. I'm going to do what I have to do so that later I can do what I want to do. Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm going to do what I have to do so that later I can do what I want to do. Get your head down. Stop trying to people please everybody. It doesn't matter if you're 19 or 49. Don't do someone else's job for them. Don't let anybody bully you into doing their work. Tell them to go pound sand. This is The Ramsey Show. Sand. Pound it. We've been doing business at Ramsey for more than 30 years. By now, we're a well-oiled machine, but it wasn't always that way. Yes, we've always had a vision, always had determination, and a drive to help people, but what we didn't have was one central place to access all our numbers so that we could get further ahead or quickly see when we needed to pivot. We were always jumping back and forth between different systems and spreadsheets. So when NetSuite by Oracle helped us wrangle our revenue, inventory, expenses, and more into one place, it was a game changer. And NetSuite's number one cloud financial system can help your business gain the same visibility because businesses thrive on timely data. And NetSuite's real-time analytics can help your business have immediate access to your numbers daily so you always know where you stand and you can move quickly. So go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey today and set up a free product tour. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey.
Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. He is George Camel. We are here for you. We're talking about your life, specifically your money questions. How about your work questions? Well, those are tied in together. And then what about your relationship questions? Well, those are also all tied into this show about you winning in those areas of your life. They all affect each other. If your work life is on fire, I can promise you, your home life could be on fire and could be affecting your finances. So George and I are here to take your questions on those topics. The phone number is 888-825-5225, 888-825-5225. Let's go to Tucson, Arizona. Allie is there. Allie, how can we help? Wow. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. Well, it's good to um, hear you. What's going on? So I just have a question about, in our personal situation, um, what you guys think about doing baby step 3B, step 4, a little bit scaled back with 10% um, investing in our 401k, and step 5 all simultaneously. Well, um, 3B and 4, I don't mind you combining. And it's kind of a choose your own adventure at that point, depending on how much of a rush you are to get into a house. For those of you that are listening, you're going, what the heck are they talking about? Baby step 3B is saving up for a down payment on a house. Baby step 4, investing 15%. And so some people... They go, all right, in a year or two, we're going to save up this down payment and we're going to pause all investing. Some people say, hey, I'm going to get up to the match with my employer on the investing side, and then the rest is going to go towards the down payment. Some people say we're going to do all 15% and slow down the down payment saving process. So you're saying you want to do 10% investing while saving up for the down payment. Yes. How long will it take you to save up that down payment at that rate? So we're not totally sure. Um, my husband works for a mine in a small town where the mine essentially owns the town. And so we get mine subsidized housing. We're only paying about 425 a month. Okay. Um, this isn't a location that we're certain that we want to end up in, but we are here for the foreseeable future. So, so what's the down payment um, goal? Give me a number. We are hoping to have $300,000 saved, $300, saved up in 10 years. Whoa, this is a 10 year journey? Yeah, we're just, we're not how, sure how long we're going to be here in this town. And it's honestly not where we want to end up, but it's where we are for now. Why 300000 That sounds like a, a huge down payment. I mean, it's a great goal, but to yeah, pause, um, and, pause your investing you, for is that, 10 is years that, is a long time. Well, is that because you're planning on buying somewhere else where it's much more expensive? Um, it's because we're not sure where we want to end up and we don't necessarily want to buy a house here. Um, and we'd like to try to buy something outright or close to it when the time comes. Right. So that makes sense. That, okay. That's, that, yeah. If that's the case, I'm going to increase investing to 15% while saving a little bit for college. And then whatever else we can throw for the down payment savings, let's do that. Because 10 years of missing out on that 5% investing, that adds up by the time you retire to potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so how old are you guys? Um, I am 28. My husband is 30. Okay. You've got plenty of time. Since this timeline for this house purchase is so far away, I would just go ahead and begin investing 15% and your income will increase over those 10 years. And so you'll get to that down payment fund or even be able to pay for something in cash. And whatever you have in 10 years, when you're ready to buy, that's how much you can put down. And if you need to take on a, a small, small mortgage, you'll pay that thing off in no time. Awesome. All right. Well, Thanks thank for, the call, you for the call. You know, she said the mind owned the town. It took me back to one of those westerns. You know what I mean? Like, it had that vibe. Like there was a tumbleweed kind of going across. <laughs> That's pretty fast. I, I mean, didn't know it, that still existed. If you ever need the some mining voice company acting. owns the entire town. Yeah, don't call George. Ken and I. and I are available for all of your westerns. Yeah, we do our own sound effects, by the way. And, um, We'll travel. Uh, let's go to Clarksville, Tennessee, not too far here from Ramsey HQ. Matthew is on the line. Matthew, how can we help? Hey, y'all. It's an honor to talk to you. Um, so I've got a job opportunity. Um, it's in a factory. Um, it's operating a welding robot. Um, not too different from what I'm doing right now, although right now I'm a manual welder just fabricating rails. Um, I'm looking for a little bit of guidance. Just, I'm really nervous about taking the job or not. Just need some help there. Sure. Okay. Let's talk about what you're nervous about and what this, what I'd want to do is frame this in the, in the form of fear. So nerves, worry, 
that's a great way of describing fear. And fear is I'm afraid or I'm worried that something bad is going to happen. That's how I define fear. So what are you afraid of? What, what are you worried about that could be bad in your future if you take this job? I'm worried that I won't like it as much as I like my current job. And yeah. what's that based on? The fact that you're kind of manning a robot versus doing the welding yourself? Yes. Uh, I think that's legitimate. Why do you like welding? Um, it's an art. It's so fun to like watch my my work turn into something bigger than just scrap beautiful. metal. Absolutely beautiful answer. So have you been on site for the new job and seen how the robot works and, and what the dude is or the lady that's running the robot's doing? Have you seen this? Not not yet. I plan on doing that later today. a boy. There's our answer. I'm just going to tell you, it's that simple. Decisions like this, folks, if you're listening and you're going, okay, this is about a guy taking a welding job. No, it isn't. Let me tell you what this is. This is about trusting your heart as it relates to future opportunities professionally that allow you to make more money but experience more meaning. And if he takes this job, let's just say, Matthew, later today you're going to see this thing. And you got to see yourself doing this. I mean, you're literally watching like a hawk what this person is doing running this robot. And then as as you're watching that, you're thinking about what it's like, what your heart feels like, uh, how intensely focused you are when you are doing the welding. And I'm just going to tell you right now, George, his head is going to process that information and your heart will decide. Your heart will go, oh my gosh, standing there all day long, pushing these three buttons, stepping back and watch this giant piece of machinery that's got no heart. By the way, robots have no heart. And 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 uh, in case anybody was wondering, I'm not sure why I'm I said that so with much. so much authority. <laughs> I'm just so sick of hearing about all this AI and all these robots. Like we're embracing all this crap. Uh, you know what? Work is about a human making a contribution. So that's 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 a little. Now, Matthew, silent. part of this excites you, I imagine. Oh, is this come with a, with more more money, more pay, of course, and more benefits? Yes. And is this yes, the future pay, of welding? More benefits. Um, it could be, although uh, welding, they'll always need manual welders as well. Yeah, there's no lid on you. So. Uh, before I got on the rabbit trail, Matthew, you just pay attention. And if you don't think you, you think your soul would slowly seep out of your body doing that, then I'd probably not take it. All right. Um, one quick thing with that. Uh, so that's, uh, robotic welding, obviously. Um, but it's a night shift. And I was thinking if I did that, uh, cause it's two to 10 PM, um, during the night and then asked my current employer if I could work part-time, few days out of the week and still be manual welding if that's a good option if i can do that i like that because now we got more money but you're still engaging in the art form and you still get something to look forward to and i would also say that i'd still i'd still uh, yes i'm fine with that but i'd still want to know that you've got an opportunity to move up beyond robotic welding so is it a ladder is it a step on the ladder yes yes that would allow you to step into work that you really love that's more manual Yes. Definitely. Well, that, that feels like that changes my advice. The, the circumstances change, so I'm going to change my advice. If it is a temporary short term and I can still keep my heart alive and still do some of the manual welding on the side uh, for other people or for my current employer as a part-time guy, yeah, I would do that. Now it's the, now that's a win-win. What's the, what's the pay difference? Uh, it's 2 50 an hour more. Two. $2.50 yeah. cents more. Yep, that yeah, adds up. It does, and I like the second scenario. But just a straight leave this job for that job? No, I wouldn't do that. But I like the second scenario. Go do that. Sharp young man. Love that. Love a welder. Robotic welding. What is that? I got to go YouTube some videos after this. Yeah, never even heard of such a thing. Hey, don't move. More of your questions coming right up. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. 
And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Visit Blinds.com to save up to 45% off everything site-wide. Go to Blinds.com now to learn more. This is where we talk about your life, specifically your money, your work, and your relationships. It's The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by George Camel. We're here for you this hour. The phone number to jump in, 888-825-5225, 888-825-5225. Gen Z and millennials are leading the big quit in 2023. So there was the great resignation. Now there's the big quit. Yeah, can who's we coming just, up with these? Ken? Well, the, it's it's headline writers. It's people people on social media. I mean, come on. Do I get to come up with one at this point? I feel like it's my turn. You know what? Why not Might join the well. party? Every day is now a thing. It's a day. National Chip Day. National Best Friend Day. National Small Dog Day. It never ends. It's just a nut. It's too much. I went on my Instagram account today at Ken Coleman, and I just looked at the camera and said, "Look." If I hear quiet quitting one more time, I'm going to go headbutt an 18-wheeler. I just it's all you I hear. can't do it anymore. It's... It was like during COVID. It was unprecedented. Oh, yeah. Remember, you got to pivot. Yeah. All right. Boy, you really do pay attention to everything Dave <sighs> says. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, those are Dave's lines. You stole those. There's no stealing here. We're all, we're all family. Uh, okay. It's like the Olive Garden, Ken. All right. So now, why are we talking about this headline? Uh, this is a CNBC article that I'm pulling from because this affects you all. Some of you are in this mindset. More than half of U.S. workers, the number is actually 61%, are considering leaving their jobs in 2023. This is from a new LinkedIn study. Now, it was interesting, George, that the uh, higher percentage or the highest percentage of Gen Z um, uh, workers are planning to call it quit. So of all of the generations, Gen Z, Millennials, Gen X, and Boomers, it was Gen Z planning to call it quits. Now, the millennials get beat up a lot, uh, your generation, about switching jobs uh, on a regular basis. Many millennials, this data is probably about eight years old, but at that time, millennials were thinking, I'm going to stay about a year on the job and then move on. Um, but this is what's interesting. Gen Zers, according to Karen Kimbrough, the chief economist at LinkedIn, they're more passionate about finding a job that aligns with their personal values. And they're confident that switching jobs will help them get there. So the main reasons that Gen Zers and millennials are considering switching jobs hasn't changed. With higher comp, improved work-life balance, opportunities for career growth, and flexible work arrangements, all ranking as top priorities. So again, nothing new here. You could say the same about millennials. What is different is that there is a sizable shift from the older Gen Xers and the boomers to the millennials and the Gen Zers. And it is, you know what? I want to do something that I connect to. Um, it's very personal. And I like that because that, that, that's helping people get in line with what I'm trying to teach is that there is purpose in work beyond a paycheck. And this younger generation does long for a connection uh, in their work. And I think that is a good thing, except that if you make it all about, well, I'm only going to work for a company that is very open about their political views aligning with mine. That can get to a point where you never, it's like trying to find a perfect church. Good luck. That church shopping can be brutal. 
here in Nashville. Yeah, so can, thoughts on that? You are a millennial. Well, there's a. I think there's been a cultural shift. You see, my parents' generation, my grandparents' generation, it was it was survival. It was get an education so you can get a good, stable job, so you can get a pension, and things have shifted. We are now in a society that wants to thrive. And so they're going, I actually want to enjoy the work I do because I saw my parents go to work for that paycheck and they hated that job. Yeah. And so they're going, oh, we don't have to do that? And so I like this mentality of let me go find that thing. What I don't like is the anti-work group who are saying, I don't think we should have to work at all as a society. This is terrible. I love it when they go, this ain't it. Let me go figure out what is. Now, the only risk here, and this is why we highlight this. So if you're a Gen Zer a parent of a Gen Zer, understand these people are just looking up. They're paying attention to the environment. And since the middle, or let's call it third quarter of 2020, when this thing called the Great Resignation happened, if you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. But we've had four plus million people each month for 18 consecutive months. This is latest job numbers out of November of 2022. Folks, that is a staggering amount of people that are quitting their jobs. So for those of you that are as old as me or or older, you understand what Musical Chairs was, a fun game that George has no idea what it is. So that's what the job market looks like. And these young people are looking up and they're going, hey, I see my friend move over here and they got an 8% bump or a 12% bump or whatever. And so now it's just like, okay, now we're just going until the music stops. The question is, when does the music stop? And with a recession looming this year, how bad it is, I don't know. I tend to be less alarmist. I don't think it's going to be big and bad. But we'll see. And so the point here is, is that our money principles, what we teach here is that, hey, you know what? Sometimes it's okay to stay because moving for a bigger paycheck may come back to bite you if it's an awful environment or you're actually not qualified to do the job or they lied to you. And now all of a sudden you're in a situation where, oh, oh, I may have to make another move and I'm putting my financial stability at risk. There's no reason for that. And so that's why budgeting and the baby steps can get you some more patience. Oh, yeah. Having some a financial foundation, it helps you slow down and make better decisions. Yeah. All right. Now, let's go into another thing that's very distressing for this young generation. America needs carpenters and plumbers and more people in the trades. And employers are having a hard time. They got the need, but they're having a hard time finding them. Why? Well, the application rate for young people seeking technical jobs like plumbing, building, electrical work, George, has dropped by 49% in 2022 compared to 2020. That's only two years. That's a massive drop. Now, I'm going to tell you something you're going, Ken, why in the world are you talking about plumbers and electricians? Because you want to know what makes a healthy economy? A strong housing industry. You can't have a strong housing industry if you don't have carpenters, plumbers, and electricians. If you all are going to sleep on this and you think, oh, it doesn't matter, you're wrong. Now, these positions continue to grow. The need is there, but students applying for them is dropping. Here is a statement from a spokesperson at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. For a long time, our society has not talked favorably about the skilled trades. They're right. We have instead encouraged students to go to college. All of them go to four-year institutions, graduate, and go into white-collar jobs. Now, let me just throw something out here, George. It's going to feel a little negative, but sometimes I just have to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Remote work and hybrid work is the biggest threat to white-collar jobs that we've ever seen. Do you know why? Thank you for asking. Because it's not long before companies are starting to go, wait a second, you want to make 120 or 150 to sit at home and work or work a couple days a week in the office, and I can hire somebody in India for 60 to do it. I'm going to let that sit for a second. If you think I'm this soothsayer of negativity, I'm not. I'm telling you, companies are doing studies on this now, and it is going to be a wake-up call, and it might be six months around the corner if we hit a serious recession. Companies start going, I'm going to offshore your job. Now, I'm not anti-remote work. Some people, I, I make comments like, oh, you're a no-no. I'm not. I'm just telling you, it is a risk. Well, is there a higher chance of being laid off yes. if you're a remote worker? Are we yes. seeing that in the data? Out of, yes, absolutely. Out of sight, out of mind. They're going to lay you off, especially if they're trying to pressure you to come back in. Again, I don't want to get off track here, but but I'm just pointing out that the trades, folks, we, we've got this marketing message that's been shoved down our throats 
that the only way to be successful is to get a college degree. And yet we're seeing the data that degrees are becoming less and less relevant. At Building Wealth, I told you it's my 2023 trend of the year. And big time companies are, are, are removing the requirement for degree. And yet we've got trades jobs where a kid can go to a trade school right out of high school for next to nothing and come out making 50, 60 grand. Do that for two or three years. Keep moving up financially, George, and then start their own business oh, and yeah. create jobs. It's half of the time at a tenth of the cost, and you're making more on the other end. Yes. In other words, it's capitalism. So you know what the real issue is, you parents out there? For your kid who doesn't want to darken the door of a college because that's not how they're wired, why don't you get over yourself and realize that it's about their success, not your status? Ooh. Get over it. That'll preach. A plumber's the most important person in the world for me when my drain is clogged. It ain't your fancy degree or your white collar and your double-breasted suit. Let's bring those back, Ken. Double-breasted suits? Yeah, I think it's time. I might. Maybe the question of the day will be brought to you by that. We'll see. We'll talk about it. Hey, the rant's over. Your question's coming up next. Don't move. This is The Ramsey Show. Helping you win in your life, win with your money, win in your work, at your workplace, win in your relationships so that you are on purpose being the best that you can be and making a difference in this world. We need you. The phone number is 888-825-5225. This is The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by George Camel. Again, the number to jump in, 888 825 Two two five. Uh, a lot of you are planning to move sometime soon. George, you just moved. Yeah, recently. You over it's all not the trauma? Fun. I'm kind of done with moving for a mm-hmm. while. Once you move, you go, let's not do that again for a while. Yeah, yeah. But uh, in most places around the country, you're going to be facing some sky-high home prices and interest rates aren't exactly returning to record lows. But... That doesn't make owning a home impossible. If you want to buy or sell, you've got to make sure you're financially ready and you've got to have a trusted and experienced real estate agent to walk you through it. Not your family friend. And I'm thinking Uncle Larry right now who just got their license and, well, he's an expert. Well, no, he's not. You need a pro. You can find that high caliber pro, that Ramsey trusted agent through our endorsed local providers program. We vet these folks from all around the country so that you know you're going to have the best support when you're moving Wherever you are going, go to RamseySolutions.com slash agent. That's RamseySolutions.com slash agent to find a Ramsey trusted real estate agent today. And yeah, George, I know you will. I tell you what, I've had one bad agent and then the rest of them were really good. And there's a difference. Huge. And they're also kind of marketing pros. They know exactly how to market this thing so you can get top dollar. That is correct. So there you go. All right. Back to the phones we go. Minneapolis, Minnesota. Thomas is there. Thomas, how can we help? Ken, George, how are you guys? Well, we're having a blast. How are you holding up out there? Good, man, good. So I got an interesting one for you guys. Um, so I about almost a year ago now, I bought a 22 Toyota Tundra, and I paid way too much for it. How much? And so I'm trying to, well, about 83. Oh. It's a, it's a, I know, and it gets worse because it's a limited. It's a limited, so it was about... I didn't know too much at the time. I just liked the truck, and I wanted to get it. And I rolled over negative equity from two previous vehicles. Um, so it was the sticker on it was fifty-seven, and I didn't know that because oh. I didn't. I know, I know, <laughs> I know. Um, and so the so I'm I owe seventy-three left on it now, <laughs> and about five of that is in warranty. So it's about sixty-eight is what I. Oh, and then the best offer I've got is from a local dealership. They're, they said they'd give me 53 for it. Well, to make it worse, I put a lot of miles on it. I got about 36000 in capping. So well, hold on I don't a second. have enough cash. To- hold on. Go ahead. But they'll still give you the 53 for it with the current mileage. Isn't that incredible? I know. That that's Which leads which is kind of the lead up to where I'm going. Because Kelly Blue Book was somewhere between like 46 and 48. I told them the whole story. I think they took pity on me. 
I don't know, but I think they're helping me out. So I don't have enough cash to cover the negative equity, and I can't. I've tried to get a personal loan, and they're saying they don't want to do it because we did just buy a house too. Who, to who's they? More interesting. Um, uh, a couple of the personal loan people online, maybe credit cards. I think they think my uh, debt to income might be pretty fast. I'm guessing. What other debt do you have? So we just bought a house in January, and I have about twelve thousand nine hundred in credit cards, and then I have about forty five in student loans. It's a private loan, so I don't think the credit bureaus know about it. So I don't know if that would affect getting a personal loan or not. Um, and then my wife has about fifteen in student loans, and I think that about sums it up, and maybe with some little medical bills here and there. And what's your household income? So it's probably like 180 last year. It should be more this year. Okay, that is good news. So you need to save up $15,000 to cover the difference, and then we still need a different vehicle for you, correct? You have two cars right, right now? Right, right. No, no, no. We have, we have one car, and I drive... Now that we moved up to Minneapolis, I drive about fifty to 60,000 miles a year for work, which is why I'm trying to get out of this ASAP while I have the deal from that dealership, like that offer. And then I have about 7,000 cash. I should be getting, you know, a pretty good-sized paycheck coming up here next. But I still need a car. And so the question is, my dad is willing to co-sign on, like, one of those 0% for 20, 21-month credit cards to pay off the difference. And then I would just pay that down as soon as possible. So the question is, should I do that or should I keep uh, You're giving me heartburn right now just thinking about this situation, Thomas. <laughs> Goodness. We need can to I, get Ken I, some Tums. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I've already <laughs> eaten two Tums off the mic as soon as you told me the price. Can he not get a local bank to give him the difference? Have you tried going to a credit union? Not one of these online I situations. I, I, called it, I called a local credit union. They said that the most that they would do for something like this is probably 5000 Um. Okay. So let's say you could get so 5K. I'm, You're still down 10K. Yeah. How quickly, making 180 plus? It's 15. It's, it's 15 because I get five back, but after I pay it first. Does that make sense? So that there's a $5,000 warranty on the truck that gets refunded once I either cancel it, but I don't want to cancel it until I pay okay. off. Okay. So let's say and you take, use the, take a month to get here. You use six from your bank that you have right now, and we'll use the new five that you get refunded towards a vehicle. So if I use the six in the bank, plus you get five the from five the from, you, you said the credit union will give you five. That gives you eleven. Now we're just down four grand. So then we're going to hustle to get these next paychecks. Five. You have another five. Mm. Well, it's twenty thousand that I have to write a check for, and then they're going to mail me a check for five thousand back in a month. Okay. For the warranty, it takes them a month to get it back to you. If I cancel it right now, then it just kind of makes it tougher, I think, because I still have to write the whole twenty. So the number, the magic number we on. need is nine thousand, between the the loan from the credit union and the six you have in the bank. Let's keep a thousand in there for emergencies. That puts you at a deficit of nine thousand. How quickly can you stack up nine thousand dollars? Probably pretty quick. I might get it on the next check. I mean, okay. you have to because you got to take this deal. I'm gonna beg that dealer to I say, "Hey, I'm gonna that. get this money to you, but I need a month to get out from under this thing." Can you – and have him now, sign something, give him a deadline for it to where he knows you're okay. good for it. Yeah, because here's my question. But, forgive my – forgive – but sometimes the most ignorant question is the right question. So I'm going to volunteer. <laughs> Thank you, Ken. George, here's what I'm wondering on his behalf. He's going to sell the truck to a different dealer than he bought it from. Is that correct? Correct. The one I bought it from said I'd come out smelling like a rose if they gave me that for it. Right, but my point is, is that if you go to this dealer today and and he buys it from you for fifty three, you owe fifteen. That's still that you owe that to the other dealer, so they're not asking for that uh, right away. Are they? Toyota, Toyota Financial. Yeah, but so I mean, do you have to pay that title? off immediately because you still owe right, it? Right. So oh well, I don't know if they'll give me fifty three if I don't give them the title. Yeah, you're gonna have to have a clean title, and to do that, there okay. can't be a loan attached there's, to it. There's where my ignorance comes in. I knew it was in there somewhere. Yeah, but I just Thomas, had to ask. no, no credit card, no zero percent, no co-signing. Like you're, this is the same deal when you rolled in two negative equities. Like we're just making the problem worse. Right, but then if I, but I also have to drive. I need a vehicle also. So I was thinking if I use my cash to buy like a five thousand dollar car, I have to drive for work. Like I drive to people's houses all day. 
And there's no and company so I vehicle. Rent, I could rent a car. No. I yeah, you, S car, but I, you might I need to rent a car. You can look into Turo as well. Yeah. And, and, you know, you're paying 40 bucks a day to rent someone's car. That's what car. I would do. And some of them, you're going to have to look into unlimited mileage with those. Otherwise, you're going to get dinged pretty hard driving over the limits. Uh, uh, so you're going to have to get creative for a little while, man. But, dude, you make 200 grand. We don't have to play these games anymore. And so I'm saving up $9,000 as quickly as I can. I'm working overtime. I'm delivering pizzas, whatever you got to do some stuff. in the next 30 oh, I'm days. I'm working 14-hour days, man. Yeah, yeah but what do you got I'm in the idiot. house? You got any expensive toys? Uh, no. You got no, an exercise got bike? You got literally anything you can sell today golf clubs. on Facebook Marketplace. Golf clubs. Are they nice golf clubs? Oh, they're great, man. They're the best. <laughs> and they're gone today. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. You're killing me. No, come on! You're D- killing it's you. January in Minnesota. Yeah. Where, where are you golfing, You guys buddy? can't play golf for no, six no. more months in that state. Okay, we're cutting up the cards. Oh, we're saying right. no more to negative equity. We're done with this, Thomas. We're doing whatever it takes to get out from under this thing. We believe in you, buddy. You know what to do. Wow. Where there's a will, there's a way, George. Can it's you in the, the market uh, for some golf clubs? I tell you what, I was going to get them for you. That would I was going to so upgrade kind. your little tinker My set. mini golf set. Yeah, that thing's a joke. Hey, good hour, George Campbell. Thanks to the team keeping us on the air and thanks to you america for listening this is your show this is the ramsey show hey george camel here if you love the show and you want a deeper dive on your money journey we've got a weekly newsletter that gives you helpful articles and tips on following the ramsey way just go to ramseysolutions.com today to sign up for the newsletter again that's ramseysolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter Headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving in Storage Studio. This is the Ramsey Show. It's where America hangs out to have a conversation about life, specifically money, work, and relationships. I'm your host, Ken Coleman, joined by my co-host, George Campbell. This hour, the phone number to jump in is 888-825-5225. We've got a bunch of new listeners and viewers that are joining the conversation and we're thrilled about that if you want to learn more about the baby steps and how to get started in this conversation go to ramseysolutions.com and click on the get started button we'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation season of life and need so go do that it's the get started button at ramseysolutions.com all right george you warmed up i'm you, you ready go- to go I'm i saw you were gargling wired. hot salt water uh during the it's break. an americano Oh, it was an Americano. Okay, yeah. so you're ready to go. Oh, yeah. You sound strong of voice. I'm caffeinated and irritated. Let's go. Oh, really? Yeah. Boy, I'm very excited to see how that plays out. Uh, all right, let's go to Devaney, uh, who is joining us in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. How can we help? Hi. I have been struggling with a budget for what feels like forever. I've used every dollar. I've listened to the books. Just recently started listening to the podcast, but I still can't seem to stay on a budget and get us out of debt. Well, are you in good hands today with We've George got- Camel? I mean, <laughs> okay. So he is tell me fantastic. where where you feel like you're failing with this. We set the budget and then we go over it. So we'll set it for let's say food, and then we go over that, or we set it for. Um, let's say entertainment and we spend it on something else or something else comes up. And okay. So let's take the food category. This is an easy one to, to grapple with. So you have the food, what's your food budget every month that you set? I don't know what to set it as. That's the problem too, is I have trouble knowing what to set it at. How many months have you been doing this? I, we've been on and off trying to set a budget for three years, probably like it's just never. So what's the, if us. you look back at how much you spent last month, or the month before. Give me an average. Are you spending five hundred and you're setting it for two fifty? Uh, well, we we probably it, it kind of fluctuates. So let's say we spend four hundred or eight hundred on food, eating out, and groceries, and all of that stuff. So. Are you guys trying to get out of debt? What's the goal here with doing the budget? Yeah, yeah, we have insane amounts of debt. So why are we eating out? That's part of the problem. We are too lazy to cook at home. <laughs> Bada bing, bada boom. We're getting so, to some answers now. Yeah, I, this is not a budgeting yeah. issue. This is a focus. It's a lifestyle issue for sure. We have trouble. Yeah, you're not focused. focused. Do you're you guys not, really yeah. want to get out of debt? Or is it just kind of an ish? Is it just like, eh, it would be nice? 
No, it's it's weighing on us. So when you get in that car and you go out to eat, do you feel like a, a shame and guilt afterwards where you're like, man, gosh, yeah. we just blew 60 bucks. We could have ate at home, but we just, our brains are foggy from work. We didn't want to cook. That's normal, yeah. right? That's how I feel after I order extra fries. Been there. Mm-hmm. And so we've got to uh, adjust our behavior and create the right habits when it comes to budgeting. So let's say you set it for two, 200 bucks and we're not eating out. That's our grocery budget for the week. Now we go, all right, we got to stick to that. We have to track what we're actually spending. And so are you tracking each transaction in the budget or is it just kind of you set it, you go over it at the end of the month, you have some shame, and then you repeat the process? Yeah, the last. <laughs> <laughs> well, know that you are not alone. And budgeting's hard. It's, it's kind of fun when you make it and it looks great on paper. And then having to stick to it is very difficult. And I'm so gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in here, George. Budgeting is not hard. It's behaving within the budget yeah. is what's so hard. Yeah, we can all make the Excel spreadsheet. But then not eating out after a long week, that's the difficult part. It's the sacrifice. And so this is going to take some forward planning. It's going to take sacrifice because right now you have a pile of debt. How much debt do you have? Um, not including our house with student loans and other consumer debt, like 214000 214000 Yep. What's the bigger debts in there? We've got two car payments and an RV. And then we've got like 11000 in credit card debt. What's your household income? Uh, about one twenty. What's What's the RV worth? Uh, about twenty six. What do you owe on it? Uh, twenty three, I believe. What about the car loans? What What's the cars worth, and what do you owe on them? Um, we owe twenty five and nineteen, and they're both worth about just that. Like I think I might be upside down in mine. All right. First things first. We're going to sell the RV today. That's a depreciating asset, and at least you're. Uh, we hope you're you're not upside down in that one. No, we're not upside. We'll get how, rid of it. How much money do you guys have in the bank? Um, we've got about probably two thousand dollars. Okay. If I'm you guys, I'm saving up for a cash car, uh, a beater to get around two of them, and I'm selling this whole kit and caboodle. Everything. You've got. <laughs> You make 120, you have almost double that in just consumer debt. Yeah. No wonder you guys are eating out. You're yeah. stressed out to your eyeballs. You can't even think straight. Yeah. yeah. But George, I, I I want them to, I agree with your advice, but I want her to sell the RV today. Let's get some momentum. Yes. Like, because that one, we don't, we got to spend, we got to save up some money and replace the cars. You don't have to do jack squat to sell the RV. And then you come away with three grand that George will tell you what to do with yeah, the three grand. What's your, what do your payments add up to servicing all of that consumer debt? Each month. Oh, God. It's like two, four, six, eight. It's probably like $1,200 or more. So $1,200 to keep payment, up with the payments. You know, What's your take-home yeah. pay? Um, it varies. I'm, I'm self-employed, and then my husband's a firefighter, so it'll, it depends on his, if he works overtime or not. Um, what are you doing for work? 1200 it could be 2000 I'm a photographer. Okay. So can you step up your photography game for a year after we sell this RV? Oh. I mean, I'm always trying to level up and step up on that. So. Can we charge more? Can we do some oh, specials? Like premium. How about do something else? In between trying to grow the photography business, let's go and make some money. The, yeah, the, the great I, news about this is this is solvable. Getting rid of the cars and the RV is the game changer. Have you cut up the credit cards yet and close the accounts? No, I, I thought I got stuck in that you have to have your credit, your credit score. So I well, le- like left them all open. For what? Until I, I, well, I didn't know that you didn't really need a credit score until I listened to the episode the other day. So okay. Well, then that, today we can cut list. up those cards. They're not a blessing yeah. in your life. They're not a crutch. They're not for emergencies. They are keeping you broke. Right. So my goal for you, we sell the RV, we get the income up, we stick to the budget. And the way we do that is by actually caring about the end result of doing the budget, which is Mm -hmm. to get out of this mess. And so at every turn, every time a transaction comes out of your bank, you've got to ask yourself, is this worth continuing to be in debt, stressed out, not where we want to be, not where we should be. You guys make six figures and it all goes out to lenders every month. And so you've got to really find that why, channel it, and then that'll help you go, all right, we're going to be. 
We're going to start meal planning. We're not going out to eat. We're cutting every subscription. No more travel for the year. We are going to batten down the hatches and get out of debt once and for all. And if you start doing this stuff, and you might need to sell the cars once you have enough cash to get the beaters, that's going to help you climb out of this pile and see the light at the end of the tunnel. So hang on the line. I'm going to send you every dollar premium, which will connect to your bank. There's a paycheck planning tool. It will help you finally get control of your money. So hang on the line. Austin will gift that to you to help you on the journey. Thanks for the call. Thank you so much. You can do this. You got to believe that you can do it, but you got to start taking action. I'd list that RV within the next hour. Thank you so much for the call. He's George Campbell. I'm Ken Coleman. This is The Ramsey Show. Look, I love real estate, and I want you to have a house, but I don't want a house to have you. That's why you need to get in touch with Churchill Mortgage to make sure you do this right. These guys are awesome. They'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you. That means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan. They show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. You can achieve debt-free home ownership, and Churchill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey, to start your approval or get more information. show continues from our Ramsey Solutions World Headquarters in the Nashville area. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by George Campbell. The phone number to jump in is 888-825-5225, 888-825-5225. Well, is it possible to build wealth in this economy? We keep hearing that question, and we understand the heart of the question. There's a lot of noise out there about inflation, stubborn inflation, looming layoffs, New headlines every day about more layoffs, rising interest rates, and on and on and on the negative news goes. That's why we've decided to bring our Building Wealth live event to more cities. Dave Ramsey and our team uh, will be coming to a city near you in the spring. Uh, Each Building Wealth live event has its own unique lineup. Dave Ramsey, George Camel, Rachel Cruz, and Jade Warshaw will be in Indianapolis on February 16th. On February 23rd, you'll see Dave Ramsey, myself, Dr. John Deloney, and Jade Warshaw in Austin, Texas. Next, we head to Salt Lake City on April 24th, where you can see Dave Ramsey, Rachel Cruz, George Camel, and Christina Ellis. And then for our last stop, Dave Ramsey, myself, Dr. John Deloney, and Christina Ellis will wrap up the tour in Anaheim, May the 2nd. Tickets start at $49, or you can get a four-pack of tickets starting at $175. Bring your friends. It's going to be a lot of fun. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash events. That's RamseySolutions.com slash events to, rever- to reserve your seats today. So, George, as I look here, we are— um, I'm going to miss you on the road, Ken. We're just uh, two uh, ships uh, passing in the night. It looks like our uh, on-road tension has finally caught up with us. They've decided to they separate split us. us. I thought it was because we're too powerful together on the road. I think it's because they're worried about the root beer float taking over. I and, agree. And uh, we're such a popular combo here uh, on the show that we are called a root beer float. And they're like, well, we don't want to distract from Dave being no. out there. I no, mean, he's the star of the show. I mean, if we're the root beer float, Dave's the steak. He's the belle of the ball, Ken. Always a bridesmaid, never a bride, you know? I wouldn't call him that. I like the steak analogy a little bit better. feels more appropriate. He's not listening. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, well, that is true. Uh, I'll tell you who is listening, though. It's Sarah. Sarah in Cincinnati. Sounds like a uh, rom-com. I love that. Alliteration. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Let's go to Sarah now. Sarah, how can we help? Hi, guys. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. Um, so I had a quick question. I am a photographer. Another photographer. You guys just talked to one. But yeah. 
Um, I just got a small inheritance from a trust from my grandma after she passed away, and I wanted to know, I need new equipment for my business, <clears throat> just a, a small amount, not a lot, and the amount of money that I'm getting isn't huge, but I was wondering what to do with the amount that's left over after. We're still paying off our debt, so we pay off about $70,000. Good for you. And we've got, thank you, and we've got about... 90 left, I believe, just a little over 90 left to pay off. Um, and so, I'm how much is the inheritance? Where, um, it's before taxes, it's like t- a little over $12,000. So, after taxes, it would be close to like nine or, yeah, like about are you nine sure? And are you sure there's taxes on it? Um, when we went and met with the um, person who takes care of her trust with Edward Jones, they, um, told us that there was like 25%, 22% because of our tax bracket, I guess. Okay. Just and wanted like, to verify because so, a lot of the time yeah. inheritance isn't taxed for the person who's receiving it. But if you got that information from a professional, I would trust them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so you think it'll totally be sh- closer yeah, to 9,000? Yeah. So after tax and everything, it'd be just a little bit either north or south. It just depends. I'm not exactly sure the exact amount, but it's right around that 9,000 mark. How much does the photography equipment cost that you feel like you need? I just need a camera. So it would be somewhere close to about $2,500 and the rest would be just like free. And how much are you making from this photography business? About 75000 after taxes and everything. Way to go. It's awesome. And what's your household income if you include your spouse? Um, I think uh, about two hundred and ten thousand total. Wonderful. Well, I I'm in the boat of wanting to use this money to pay down the debt, and we upgrade the camera equipment through your business income, through kind of fresh okay. new income. Um, either way, you're going to be using the cash. But I'm just wondering, it, it would feel different if you're investing in new equipment through cash flow from the business. Okay. How much money do you guys have in the bank? Um, we've got our – so since we're just doing our – that we're in baby step three or two because we're paying off all of our debt, we've got the $1,000 emergency fund. Okay. So then everything else is just going towards that debt. What kind of debt's the 90 that's remaining? Um, student loans, uh, student loans, I have one car payment and the rest is, um, credit cards. Okay. What's left on the car loan? Uh, like 9,000. And what's the car worth? Uh, about 26,000, 27. Ooh, that's pretty tempting. I think I'm paying now. I'm I, George. <laughs> that's knew. what I'm thinking. Uh, she was like, pl- I was hoping he wouldn't go there. I mean, I'm just looking at the the hard math on the thing. I mean, you're going to net 17. You go get a car for mm-hmm. seven. Now you've got 10,000 that magically appeared. And I would feel a whole lot better you using that money to purchase the new equipment, the rest going towards the debt, um, to put a little bit of skin in the game. Because right now okay. it doesn't feel like the – you guys, have, you're, you're on the plan for sure. But it's easy to get a little bit comfortable – this money, you know, from grandma, which what a beautiful legacy to leave. Um, yeah. Would, I don't know. I don't know grandma. I don't know how she would have wanted you to use it. I think it's beautiful either way for using it to grow your business, using it to pay down debt. Uh, those are both great things. But I still mm-hmm. would want some sacrifice to feel like I earned this camera purchase. Okay. But – Either okay. way, you're going to get there. It's, it's not a lot of money at the end of the day. Uh, and see if you exactly. can get the camera used. Are you buying a new camera? That was my thing as I was definitely going to get it used because it's it's not something that I need to get brand new. Okay. Yeah, I might just pause and not rush into the camera purchase and go, let me wait. Let me see, find a deal on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, my photographer community in Cincinnati. There's people unloading okay. gear left and right. I'm, I'm yeah. curious. What's the... I want to make sure you caught the momentum there where George, George is very, very nice. I think you got to <laughs> sell the car because it allows you to fast forward so much. What's the, on your debt snowball, what's the smallest amount? What is it? A credit card? What's the amount? It's a credit card. How much? It's like 6000 I'm taking the What's number. the interest rate on that card? Um, 23%. Yeah. And <laughs> while George is, where's the Tums, Ken? I'm going to fill in while George wipes it. He just threw up in his mouth. He needs to wipe his mouth off. <laughs> Uh, my question is, what is the payment on that, that credit card for nine? 
So Order. right now, well, without the extra payment we're putting on it, it's like two thirty nine. I'm taking the I'm taking grandmother's money, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna pay off that credit card. Now that you know because what to do. That's kind of where I was going. <laughs> that's okay. That what I would do is I'd take the money from grandmother, pay off the next okay. snowball, which is nine thousand dollar credit card. You know what to do. You've done it so far. You roll that money into the next thing. I would sell the car, like George said. Okay. That's twenty six. Get a ten thousand dollar car. That's okay. And now, now we're sitting there with more money to put on the next credit card. I mean, you're just motoring here. This is like advancing the momentum, is what I would do. Okay. And now making two ten, okay. having to pay off, you know, seventy grand. We're going. Oh, we got this thing in the next year. Like we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And that's the whole goal: is how do we speed this up? Because this is not fun. We can all admit that. No. Getting into the mess was kind of fun along the way. Getting all the stuff and oh, all. Yeah. But now we're looking back at it with regret. And so I want to speed up this process so you guys can focus on the future and building for that instead of paying for the past. So that's the spirit okay. of all this. It's not because I don't want Sarah to have nice things. It's because I see this sweet gift from grandma as a little fast forward chip in the debt snowball more than I do a, ooh, shiny new camera. Look mm-hmm. at that. Yeah, I agree. And wow. the camera will get there. You're already crushing it with the photography business. Do an extra few sessions and use that money towards the camera. And Georgia, she does what we said. Sells the car, takes the money from grandmother, and just fast forwards the whole process. What is the feeling in one word that you get from that kind of a big axe? I'm going to go with elation. Elation. Pure joy. I like that. I mean, that's one. You're going to be running through a wall. Big swing at that big old tree there. I love it. Thank you so much for the call, Sarah. You got this. Don't move. More Ramsey Show coming right up. On baby step number one, eh? How'd you guess? With health care costs rising, learn how Christian Healthcare Ministries can help you make the most out of your budget. Visit chministries.org slash budget. Don't worry, it's worth it. Money life, your work life, and your relationship life. This is The Ramsey Show, 888 5225 888 I'm Ken Coleman. George Campbell joins me taking your calls. David is up in Columbus, Ohio. David, how can we help? Hello, hello. Hello, hello. What's going on? Um, well, my wife and I went through the Financial Peace University DVD set last year, and it helped us to pay off quite a large amount of debt from our credit cards and a personal loan that I had. And um, uh, we worked ourselves down to two debts, but we seem to be stuck in a revolving door of the baby steps the past six months and, um, and kind of looking for guidance on where to go from here. Okay. What's this revolving door? Have you had some emergencies? Yeah, we built up our emergency fund. Uh, we've got three vehicles. One of them I owe on. The other two we own outright. The two that we do own on have some higher miles. So every time we build up the fund, they need maintenance or the house needs maintenance. Um, we build up our six months, uh, essentially, savings. And unfortunately, last year we had an unexpected need to put a roof on the house. So that took a big chunk out of that fund as well. Um, so we're, we're kind of looking where to get it from here. I'd like to put more in my 401k. How much are you putting now? Um, uh, I was putting 15% in. Uh, last year, I cut it back to 6% to help pay off the excess debt, and I'm wanting to take that back to 15 But I'm torn as to whether to put more into 401k or to pay off the car loan that I currently have. I'm confused as to which Financial Peace University you went through, David. You're doing 17 things at once. Yes, that's, that's our, our downfall. We seem to take on way too much at once. Okay, so how about this? What if... For six months, you tried the plan as is, and you went all in. 
which means we're not investing. We're taking our savings down to a thousand dollars, and we're putting every single ounce of energy and money towards our consumer debt. Would you Would you take that challenge? Absolutely. And I tell you that because I have such confidence in you, and I've seen thousands of people who go all in actually accomplish it, and I've also talked to hundreds more on the phones who go, hey, I don't know why I'm not making the progress I should be, and also I'm not following the baby steps as is. And so it's not to be fundamentalist. It's just to go, when you focus all of your energy and intensity on one thing at a time, you make progress. That's all it is. So how much do you have left in consumer debt? We owe a hundred thousand on our house, and we owe thirteen. Well, I owe thirteen thousand on my car. So we're just thirteen away from this thing being done in baby step two. Correct. What's the car worth? Uh, it books for right under fourteen. However, the offers I've gotten from the dealer, I've tried to sell back to them. Um, they're not wanting the budge off of ten. Well, forget the dealers. Let's go private party. Let's do our research online and see if there's any online companies that would buy it for more, and uh, go from there. Because this clears the deck for you to be able to start saving up that fully funded emergency fund. And you have three cars. Do you need? Can you survive on with two? Uh, yeah, we're exploring the option of selling our truck. Uh, we own it outright, so that would be you know sixty five hundred to seven thousand dollars we can pocket. Okay. Yeah. And I I, I don't want to miss D- David. I want you to miss what George said. You're kind of like yeah. Don't sell the car to the dealer. They're never going to give you what you can get private party. It's not even close. Yeah, I, I, I tried to sell at private party last month, and unfortunately, you know, a lot of tire kickers, uh, not a whole lot of interest, and they seemed to offer about the same as what Where'd you the list it? Offered. Where'd you post it? Well, uh, it was listed on Craigslist, local ads, Facebook, um, just a couple places. Well, are you offering, are you selling it for what it, what it really could command via Blue Book? Oh, uh, yeah, the Blue Book's. Uh, listed it for thirteen nine. I had it priced just under fourteen. Um, I even had a couple offers out. You know, if someone was willing to do thirteen five, essentially that would dissolve the loan, and I'd pocket four hundred dollars, and I could wash my hands of it and continue on the flight. Why didn't you do that? Uh, the best offer I could get was around ten. Oh, you weren't actually getting the. Oh, the full. I thought you okay. said you got. Uh, yeah, that, that. Yeah, that's the downside. What's it's, your it, it, household kind of, income, David? Uh, we bring in, we gross about a hundred uh, a year. Okay, so let's say we even didn't sell the car. How quickly do you think this thing's getting paid off if we brought investing down to zero and we went full focus on getting rid of this car loan? Um, hmm. I, I know without touching the investing, we calculate we could potentially have it paid off by August. Uh, without the investing, I, I'd say I'm thinking ninety July. days max. You guys are bringing. You know, I mean, you're. Bring it home, what, 7K a month? Um, a little bit under that. So 13, let's say we could divide that in three, right? That's yeah. going to be 4300 bucks a month. So the question now becomes, how do we find $4,300 worth of margin to throw at this debt? Which means we're pausing investing, which means we're not eating out, which means we're hatching, you know, getting the, the budget dialed in. Could you come up with four grand a month to throw at this car loan? Absolutely. And so now 90 days from now, we're at baby step three. And so we're out of this vicious cycle you've been experiencing. And if there was another emergency, we would just pause the baby steps and start saving up with those future paychecks. Okay. But you got to go all in for this to work, David. And so I want you to call us back as you go all in on this and let us know if anything has changed for you. Because I think it will. Yeah. Good advice there. Thanks again for the call. Let's go to Glenn in Chicago. Glenn, how can we help? Gentlemen, my wife and I are uh, trying to figure out if we're on baby step 3B or baby step 4. Um, we've paid off a lot of debt, and uh, we have our emergency fund in place. Um, but because we have uh, four kids and we're thinking about college uh but we also don't own a home yet. We're just trying to figure out what the priority now needs to be. So you said you've paid off a lot of debt. Is the debt gone completely? Yes, sir. That's correct. Everything. Awesome. And you've got a fully funded emergency fund. How much do you have in the bank for that? 15000 Wonderful. So you're wondering, should we focus on 3B with the down payment, or do we go ahead and start investing that 15%, and then what about college? Is that the kind of conundrum? Is what speed to do all of these? That's that's exactly right. You got it. What? How old are you two? 
My wife is 36 and I am 31. Okay. Is there a rush to get into a home? Uh, I mean, you got four kids and you're renting. Is, the, is there enough space? Are you guys good there? Could yeah. you rent for a few more years? Yes, we could. I think we could rent for another three years. I'm, we're both content with that. Great. And then have you been investing at all previously or is this all new? We've been setting aside $150 every month into a Roth uh, for the last year. Um, other than that, we've been setting aside, uh, a, we've got about thirty grand now for the house in addition to the emergency fund and a brokerage account. Cool. So we are investing, uh, but really the 150 is the retirement investment. The, the rest of the savings we have is going into the, like I said, a brokerage for, for the house. Okay. If I'm in your shoes, if you're doing the brokerage, you want to have a longer term time frame and mindset. So this is a three plus decision for the home. Correct. And so if that's yep. the case, I would start investing 15%. I would throw a little bit into, you know, a 529 or an ESA for each of those kids. And then anything remaining is going to go towards the down payment to keep, you know, saving up for that. And then whatever money you have at the end of those three years or four years, that will help us decide how much house we can afford and where we're going to live and all of those decisions. Okay. So for now, you you think it would be best to start 15% into retirement? Yes. At your, at your ages with, uh, you know, you haven't saved a whole lot. I want the power of compound interest working for you. You guys have done the hard work of getting out of debt, getting the emergency fund in place. Now let's start building for the future so that the kids don't have to cover you guys in retirement. Because there's a 100% chance you'll retire. There's a 50-50 chance the kids go to college and graduate. And so I want to make sure we're at least investing that 15%. We'll get the down payment when we get there. And let's put a little bit for college to help that money grow. Thanks for the call. Yeah, you got this, Glenn. Good advice, George. I'm trying to keep up, Ken. Uh, you're doing more than keeping up. You, uh, you get get yourself a little uh, protein bar during the break. It's all the, the caffeine. A little protein. All the caffeine's starting to make you crash. A little protein during this break. He'll be ready, folks. Woo. And I've always got the juice, so don't worry about me. This is The Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by George Camel. We're taking your calls this hour, 888-825-5225. Uh, studies show, George, that most people abandon their New Year's resolutions by February. Are you aware of this? That's a shame. How are you doing on yours? Did you have any at all? You know, I just said a few. I usually go overboard, and I went a little more focused this year. What was, what was your focus? And I'm on track. Uh, trying to get the habit of reading and writing. Those are the big ones. You like you that? You skipped elementary school? Well, reading more books oh, and then a habit of writing more regularly. And, and are you staying with it? Mostly. All right, good. Well, the truth is it's too early in the year to get discouraged about finding meaningful work. Purpose in the workplace. Purpose, period. You don't have to resort to quiet quitting because you want to make a change but don't know where to start. You were designed, you were created to fill a unique role in and through your work. That means you are needed and you must do it. Somebody out there needs you to be the best version of you. That's why I do the Ken Coleman Show here on the Ramsey Network, and it's why I created the Get Clear Career Assessment so that you can see how you are uniquely made to contribute. In other words, your talent, what you do best, your passion, what work you enjoy, and then your mission, what results motivate you to do your best work. It's only going to take you about 15 minutes to answer some 
specific questions. It's going to give you a custom report that describes you in the way I just laid out, and it makes some suggestions to you, but more importantly, allows you to have, maybe for the first time in your life, awareness that will lead to tremendous confidence and courage to be who you're supposed to be. And, and the result of that, George, is more income and more impact, more money, more meaning. You can get the Get Clear assessment today at RamseySolutions.com slash get clear, RamseySolutions.com slash get clear. And if you need more uh, direction, even after your results, call me on the Ken Coleman Show. Helping a lot of people, and this is a game changer for those of you who feel stuck. So go check it out. All right, let's get to the phones. Ruth joins us in Los Angeles, California. Ruth, how can we help? Hi, um, I'm calling because I'm at a life stage where I've come through a lot of transition. My my husband passed away uh, three years ago, and um, what happened over the course of time is uh, he passed away, and in the course I I took on our properties and that sort of thing. So I I inherited wealth or took over the family business that part of it. And um, I lost a lot, or actually like all family, uh, friends, and I've had family try to sue me for part of his estate. And I'm in a place where I just need new friends, and I'm looking for people that have wealth and are interested in using it to reach out and make an impact and help others. But I don't know where to go for that sort of thing. Wow. Well, first of all, you've been through a lot, and yeah, that's tough. And uh, you do need those people, and and you need friends. Uh, you have you? Did I hear you say you lost your friends? Oh yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I lost my best friend. She died the year before my husband died. Okay. So, mm. but also, what happened is all of a sudden, friends expected me to to be. To, give them money or make things, throw them parties, that sort of thing. It got, it got weird. Yeah. Because they and, saw you come into a lot of wealth and then they got real attached. Uh, yeah. And so, I mean, I literally had to cut basically everybody out. Wow. Um, I'm well, sorry, Ruth. I'm sorry you've been through that. And, and I, I, I will tell you though, I think you do know where these people are, you know, so you're in the Los Angeles area. Um, you are, uh, still running the company, I'm guessing. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you, I don't, it pretty much, you know, it pretty much runs itself. Right. I'm basically retired. I don't really need to do right. very much. It's not and hands it was that on. way before gotcha. my husband okay. passed as well. Exactly. So first thing I so want you I, doing is, I have is I'm Go sorry. Ahead. I just want to, here's what I want you to do. I want you to start joining some social activities where, you know, quite frankly, let's just be really honest where other wealthy women are going to be. Because now, now they don't need you for anything, and mm -hmm. you're going to find some like-minded souls and people who understand you, and they're not, you know, they're just friends with you. They just want to play tennis with you, or they want to play bunko, or they, they don't go, want anything. They from don't you. want anything other than just it's a social thing. So, I mean, this is as simple as you know, local country clubs and and social clubs, and like you got to get out and meet people, and the only way to meet people is to get in those places where those people are congregating. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know the old phrase, birds of a feather flock together. Well, you know where those people are flocking, yes or no? Uh, why would I be calling you if that was no, obvious? No, but see, but I, think you're calling for, I think you're calling for ideas, which I'm giving you ideas, but you know where those people are. Where, where in the Los Angeles area do you live? Give me, give me the, uh, the neighborhood or the, the area of Los Angeles. It's like Manhattan Beach. Manhattan Beach. Okay, great. Lovely area. Okay. So are there country clubs at, in, in the Manhattan Beach area? Um, yeah. Yes. Okay, so that's a, that's a big dollar thing. I know. Hold okay. on. We're brainstorming, all right? So it's not a country club. But you live in a neighborhood, Ruth, right? It's got an HOA? A little bit with HOA, yeah. Yeah, so, so is there, there there's a, Facebook groups probably in your community. There's probably multiple for different social groups. I mean, I've, I'm in a small neighborhood, and we've got a ton of them. And so I would start connecting Go to the HOA meetings just to meet people in the neighborhood because likely they are in the same level of wealth in a, in a general way as you. And then you start joining those Facebook groups and find figure out what hobbies you want to connect with people over. Or do you have things that you like to do for fun? Yeah. I mean, just like what you guys were saying in the break. I mean, I love reading. I love writing. I like 
hiking and that sort of thing. I have a disabled family member that lives with me, he's my son, and that limits the amount of time I have free to to go out engage. Yeah. So I, I do have a, a but uh I I still, even in the neighborhood, I run into situations where people are asking a lot of financial questions, and that is, that's uncomfortable. You mean like they're Um, asking you for uh, money? No, they're asking me how much I sold my house for. They're asking me how much the repairs on my house. I mean, I don't normally, I don't know, I don't expect to be having those kind of conversations with people that are friends, it would be more like, you know, how's your mom or how was your trip, your vacation or that sort of thing. Um, well, again, so, I, I mean, I, I appreciate George jumping in and I appreciate what you're saying, but you, you do know where wealthy people are spending time. You do. You, you simply do. I don't know Manhattan Beach like you know Manhattan Beach, but, you know, in surrounding areas, I mean, you, you've got more hobbies than just reading and writing. Now, you are limited, and I think this is part of the problem. Or I should say challenge because of your son. I mean, that's a challenge for you. You just don't have a ton of time. So you've got to make the most of that time. And so whether it be book clubs in certain areas, but I mean, you know, where are wealthy people, people that are successful that, again, aren't clingy and aren't looking for anything from you other than just the enjoyment of relationship and a shared hobby or shared interest? That's what you've got to do. You make a list of your interests and where are people hanging out. And you're in a very wealthy area, so it's not going to be hard to run into those people. But it is it is going to be some intentionality, like George said, uh, on, on certain maybe groups and, and, and talking around the neighborhood. And then, you know, listen, it depends on how much of this – the rest of your life this, this wants to be a big deal. You've got a lot of money if you need to move to a better area. You know, I mean, this is the stuff life is made of. You can't do this alone. You don't want to be alone. And you need this. And so you need to make moves to put yourself around those people. It's just you deciding. It's time. And here's a challenge, Ruth. What if you started the book club and you posted in your neighborhood Facebook group and said, hey, I'm going to have people over once a week. Here's what we're doing. Let me know if you want to join. That happens all the time. And it's a great way when you're the initiator, amazing things happen. Yeah. I love that idea. Okay. So just put yourself out there. It it can be a little scary. It's, you know, as you get older, you're like less likely to want to put yourself out there. But, uh, you know, as you just go grocery shopping or where you're out and about, make conversation with people. Yeah. I mean, where are women exercising or doing things in the Manhattan? You're just looking for affinity groups and something that you're interested in. And that's just paying attention to what's out there. By the way, George, you ever been to Manhattan Beach? No, I want to go now, though. Absolutely lovely little area. Street kind of just goes down into the pier. Let's Love. go. A little buddy-buddy uh, road Is trip. that what we're doing? All right. Well, we'll book it during the commercial break. Don't move. More of The Ramsey Show coming up. Hey, it's Ken. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. Ramsey Solutions broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studio. This is the Ramsey Show. It's where America is hanging out to have a conversation specifically about your money life, your work life, and your relationship life. The phone number to join in is 888 825 5225. I'm Ken Coleman. George Camel joins me this hour. Again, the number to jump in is 888 825 5225. We're going to start this hour off with Kara in Houston, Texas. Kara, how can we help? Hi. Um, I have a 401k, and I wanted to roll it over to a Roth IRA, but I needed to take some money out. So I'm wondering, is it best to do a withdrawal now and then roll it over or roll it over and then try to take a withdrawal? I just wouldn't take a withdrawal at all. How old are you? I'm 65, and it's not a lot of money. It's it's only $14,000. It's 
and I didn't even know it was there. I got a, a letter from an old employer of 10 years ago, so I completely forgot about this. So this old 401k you've had sitting around, and you're at retirement age now when you can withdraw from this with no penalties. Is it a right. traditional 401k? Yes. I would uh, go through with the withdrawal, the uh, rollover, direct rollover to a traditional IRA, and then use okay. that money. And then use it. Okay. That's short and sweet. That's all I needed to know. Absolutely. All right. How about that? That was the easiest call of the day, Ken. There you go. Way Thanks for go. the win, Kara. Way to go, Kara. Jennifer is now up in St. Petersburg, Florida. Jennifer, how can we help? Uh, hi. Hi. Uh, um, so I'm just kind of, um, I need assistance to figure stuff out because my, my husband may possibly be laid off of work and we have a home that we need to pay for that we just recently purchased and we don't really have major bills, but I, I have a job, a side job and I'm going into like a third job. Uh, so it's just kind of like, you know, how can we prepare in case that was to happen? Okay, so what do we know? What do we know? Not what we think and what we feel. Right now we want to focus on what we know about the possibility of him being laid off. What, what, what is he um, hearing? What is, what so is he telling you? There's new management on board now in the company, and there's like this one major project that they've had him working on. And once that project is done... Um, Previously, they had talked about, you know, converting that particular office space into something that has nothing to do with what he does now. Okay, so, so when does he anticipate that the project that he's working on will be finished? In about a month and a half. <laughs> All right, so we start there. All right, so worst case scenario is in a month and a half, they lay him off. Mm -hmm. All right, so in that month and a half time, starting today, tonight, mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. If it's me, this is what I would do if I were your husband. I'd be reaching out to people that I know in his industry, uh, people that uh, may know somebody in other companies that uh, hire people to do what he does. So we're just mm -hmm. looking, you know, St. Petersburg, Florida, big area, pretty, pretty good job market is my guess. And yeah. so I'd be shaking the tree like he's looking, he's applying. I mean... He, he can start that process now. He doesn't have to take it. He can start interviewing, you know? The thing is that he's already, like, out of at, at his max. Like, he's actually getting over overpaid for what he actually does, you know, in anywhere else. What does that have you to know? do with what I told you, though? What does that have to yeah, do yeah. with the fact that it's that, that he's still got to be looking for something? We need a plan. We need a backup plan. Yes? So you're saying, worst yeah. case, there's a slight reduction in income. If he mm -hmm. goes to a different company. So we'll that'll adjust our budget. So let's look mm -hmm. at the numbers here. Are you guys okay financially? Um, for the most part, yes. Do you have I, debt? I, I, um, just like the, the house and we don't have car. We, we don't have car debt. Um, credit cards we do have. Um, I have a, like two credit cards. Um, not too, not nothing too crazy. Maximum maybe like three thousand. In total. Are you carrying a balance? Um, you have credit card debt that you're carrying. Yes. How much? Well, like two two thousand change. You know, I just recently got the credit card, so of course during the holiday, you know. Well, the best thing you can do when this is just kind of the warning sign is to cut them up because mm -hmm. if you have a reduction in income, the last thing you need is payments. To yeah. lenders, and so I would get rid of these cards, pay them off. Do you have money in the bank right now? Not really. I tried starting like a savings account. I've always been very bad about financials, like very. I've always like counted pennies because I've always been, for the most part, a single mom. So obviously now it's different. He actually, on the other hand, he's very good with finances and savings and you know numbers. He's like a numbers man. Okay, so hold um, on, hold on a second. Let's slow down for a minute. And I, mm -hmm. I appreciate we're asking about your money, but you called to say, what are we going to do if he gets laid off? The point is, mm -hmm. is number one. George will help you. You need to get disciplined with money. We're going to give you some resources mm -hmm. so that you two get on the same page. I'm glad he's good with money. You need to let him lead in that way. Let him model for it. Say, hey, I'm in. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to do it the things the way that you do things. All right. That's a start. But the, okay. the reality is, is that he makes X amount of dollars. How much does he make? Close to 30. $30,000. And what does he do? Uh no, no, close. Well, close to thirty dollars the hour. Oh, thirty dollars okay. an hour. Well, okay. So we'll call that about sixty grand <laughs> That's a about, year. Yeah. So what does he do? 
Um, do I really have to share that? <laughs> no, but 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 okay. I'm, you don't have to. I was just simply trying to say. I said to you, my first thing was he needs to start looking for jobs, looking for work that he does now mm-hmm. that he's got some mm-hmm. actual experience in and some skill. Okay. Your your first response was. Well, he already makes more than he would anywhere else. And that's mm-hmm. not the mindset. I mean, he needs to be looking right now. He doesn't want to not have an exit strategy. You know, we go on airplanes and they tell us in case of a water landing or a crash or whatever, we got to exit here, exit here, exit here. That's what I'm right. trying to explain to you. He needs, he's got a month and a half lead time in a worst case scenario. He may not mm-hmm. get laid off at all, but he's got a month and a half. And Mm -hmm. so I'll give it back to George to help you on the money stuff. But I want to make sure you're going back to him going, hey, you start looking out. I can start looking for you, with you. We're looking for opportunities that may be available now. Start the interviewing process. And then if he gets a couple of job offers, if they're good, he can go back to these guys and go, hey, guys, I got a couple offers. New management, Mm -hmm. do you want me here? I mean, he's got some leverage. So let's go find some opportunities and exit strategy. Okay. So that's the career side, Jennifer. The financial side, the best thing you can do in case this happens and in case any emergency happens is having no debt and a bunch of cash in the bank. And so that is your A1 over the next 45 days is to get rid of all consumer debt and start saving up money and savings, which means we're not going to go out to eat. We're not going to go on our shopping sprees to Target or wherever your favorite place is. We are getting really serious right now. We're in a storm. Okay. And so how much debt do you have outside of those two credit? You said you have 2000 in credit card debt. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, well, that's, that's my credit card. Um, you know, the other credit card that we mostly pay, like, some of the bills um, with is about anywhere between... You said he's good with money. Thousand. If he's racking up credit card debt, he ain't good with money. And so let's cut up these cards. And by the way, it's our money. It's our credit cards. Let's get on a plan together. It's not he's good and I'm bad and we're just doing our own thing. We're going to send you one year of Financial Peace University so that you guys can get on the same page, create shared values, goals, common language, and you will get through this layoff if you do what Ken said and jump to a different career. Thank you so much for the call. It's time to get serious. Prepare always for a storm. The best way to do that is to be safe and have peace with your money. This is The Ramsey Show. America. You can join the conversation here on The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by George Camel. 888 is the number. Uh, it's time for our question of the day, brought to you by Laminators. Keeping your sensitive documents protected since 1958. Gotta love a laminator. Yeah. I love You ever used the one here in the break room? As a matter of fact, yeah. Nothing uh, gives me more joy than laminators. The laminating. documents that I go to often on The Ken Coleman Show are, in fact, laminated. Love it. Our question comes from Brandy in Colorado. She says, I'm 42 and a single mom of a 16-year-old. I had to withdraw all of my retirement to help cover unexpected medical expenses. I'm a renter, no retirement savings now, and live paycheck to paycheck. I just received two job offers, and I don't know what to pick. Option one, full-time working for the federal government with awesome retirement and benefits with an annual salary of 57000 Option two, full-time corporate job with an annual salary of 100000 and a 401k with a match of 3%. Should I accept the higher-paying job to help me pay off the 10k in credit card, 20k car, and 2000 monthly rent in Colorado, or should I choose the federal government job with stability and good retirement? I would like to be debt-free in three years so I can move to another state where cost of living is more reasonable and I can purchase a condo or townhome for myself. Well, Brandy, thank you for the easiest question of the day that no, I've right. ever had to answer, it's absolutely number two, and it's not even close. I think the word here in your two questions that's got you hung up on this, because this is so obvious to George and I to take the corporate job where you're making almost double, and that doesn't even include potential raises over the next couple of years, uh, and the match of the 401k. But the word, George, in this question that's got her and other people, they kind of get stuck on this. Can I guess it? Yeah, go for it. Stability. You nailed it. They think, well, it's a government job. 
So the government's always going to be here, and there's no way they're going to lay me off. And that, first of all, that's just not true. So uh, it's absolutely number two, take the full-time corporate job with a higher salary, opportunity to get raises beyond that, and the 401k with a match of 3%. You're going to pay off that debt in no time. Yeah, what I'm looking at here, you've got 30K in consumer debt. If you take this job for 100K, that's 43 more than the other job would have paid. And you said it's going to take you three years? Mm Mm-mm. Making 100K, you can pay off 30K in one year. And by the way, you're still going to be making $43,000 more every single year, that corporate job, probably with more upward mobility to make even more. Yes, yes. And let me just say this. Listen, government work, there are good people that listen to this program, watch this program, and you are in government work. But this idea that it's so much more stable is a complete myth. And you just don't have the opportunity for growth. That I know. Uh, So anyway, uh, good stuff there. All right, George, uh, speaking of uh, the government. Oh, yeah. Big in, news, Ken. In the news, the last uh, 24, 48 hours. All the rage among the youth uh, in Congress. Well, no, this is, well, I don't know that you can refer to Joe Biden as youth. God bless his soul. Uh, but uh, Joe Biden and Kevin McCarthy, the president and the Speaker of the House, are just locked in a battle. I haven't been able to see what's going on the last couple hours. But uh, the uh, the potential government shutdown, Janet Yellen, Treasury Secretary. By the way, I'm doing this all from yesterday's news. No talking points here. So I hope this is accurate uh, to the moment. But uh, uh, emergency measures by Janet Yellen to avoid a government shutdown. And this is all over raising the debt ceiling. Biden and the Democrats want to raise the debt ceiling. And McCarthy and Republicans don't want to do it. Uh, we're not going to talk about the politics of it. Well, We're what does it about mean how for you could be affected. if that happens? Is that something that we just kind of don't feel, George? How do, how will raising the debt limit, which is at all time highs, how will that affect those that are listening and watching? Well, the this is the idea. If the U.S. defaulted on its debts, meaning it can't pay the carried interest, that could cause chaos. Now, it's never happened, and so the idea here doesn't mean it won't. It doesn't mean it won't. Uh, the the chances of them raising the debt ceiling. Probably pretty high because they keep doing it every year. They just keep raising the credit limit, even though we're. Yeah, we're this broke. is a showdown. This is a negotiation. Absolutely. So, if you're confused as to what this all amounts to, the debt ceiling is the amount the U.S. government can borrow to honor its spending obligations. And uh, here's how it affects you. So, by the way, the debt ceiling limit uh, was 31.4 trillion, and we reached it. So, you know, reach for the stars, Ken. We at least we hit a goal there. <laughs> That's sad. And so, here's the the few ways you could be impacted, America, by the debt ceiling crisis. Number one is the stock market. The stock market does not like uncertainty, Mm -hmm. and defaulting on our debts would cause the stock market to plunge. Estimates, uh, Chief Economist Mark Zandi said, could plunge by one-third and erase $15 trillion in household wealth. Yeah, that hurts. That's scary. That could affect a lot of people, affect a lot of your retirement savings. We do not like that. The other thing it could affect is the cost to borrow. And so a default would push interest rates even higher. So the cost to borrow homes, to get that car loan, your credit card interest rates, it would explode. It would cause mayhem. The silver lining there is I hope it's it stops people from borrowing more money. So there you go. Uh, the last thing it could affect is Social Security and Medicare. So the debt limit fight poses several risks to these seniors who are on Social Security, Medicare, And so without a breakthrough in Congress, the government might not be able to send out those monthly benefit checks or pay for Medicare. So, And let's not forget the overall value of the dollar. That's true. The dollar has been strong over the last year. It could hurt the value. It's already dropped pretty precipitously over the last couple of days. And that, again, affects overall inflation. And it'll hurt GDP. It'll hurt our standing globally. It's a a complete mess. And... um, and I'm just going to put this out there. We're going to get back to the phones. And and it could because you, the people, have the power to get these bums' attention in D.C. Because your governor, in most states, they have to balance the budget, many states. It's a constitutional requirement for the state to budget, but excuse me, to balance its spreadsheet. I get so angry talking about it, I, don't, I can't talk. Well, you but know, it, it, we don't have a balanced budget amendment. To yes. the U.S. Constitution. And you know, Ken, we're around here. We're very fiscally conservative. And uh, Congress historically— Wouldn't you love to see Dave not- Ramsey go to Washington for about 30 days, lock all of them in a room? They only get bathroom breaks and, and food breaks. I would pay to watch that on C-SPAN. And Dave takes, his, Dave takes his just his good old-fashioned budget, 
the old kitchen table, yep. sits in the middle of the room. Yellow pad. And he just starts going through it, and he would absolutely balance the budget. I believe it. I know he would. I'm not kidding you. I mean, he really could. Would Dave darken the doors no. of that building? That's no. the question. No, no. I don't think no he has chance. any interest. He wouldn't last 30 minutes up there, much less 30 days that it would take. But mm. uh, there you go. All right, to the phones we go. Devin joins us in Independence. Well, huh, that's appropriate. Independence, Kansas. Devin, how can we help? Hi, I'm doing great. How are you guys doing today? We're having a blast. What's going on? Uh, I was calling because I have a possible job opportunity, and I have a little bit of debt left over from my divorce I went through. How much? Um, and I have about collectively about sixteen thousand left out of forty-two. Okay. And what what is um, what is the sixteen k in debt made up of? Uh, a car repossession that she let go back, and a credit card that right. she had. All right. All right. So, what's your question? Um, so I currently work at a ranch right now as a welder fabricator and a ranch hand managing livestock. I make about 45 a year, and I just got a job po- opportunity to go into the oil industry as a um, floor hand for a rig. What would and that be? going to be pretty much going from 45, I net about 40 to 45 a year here, whereas if I take that job, I'll be making about ninety six to one hundred and ten. All right. So, what are you wondering? You you dialed the number because you're wondering something. What's what stopping are you, you from taking it? Uh, I, I'm a single father. I have full sole custody of my daughter, and the job would be more of on the road. I'd be gone for two weeks, home for two weeks. Oh, do you have any support to help out with her? Yes, I do. I have my fiance and my family. I'm doing it for a season. It Absolutely. may only be for a year, but it'll put you in a totally different financial position. Couldn't to make an extra fifty k. George is absolutely right. Because you got the fiance and parents to help with her, your heart's going to be sad, but you're going to be debt free before you know it, and then you get rid of that job the minute you get where you want to be. I'd go baby step two and three before I move on. Fill up that emergency fund and then come back home. Thanks for the call. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. I'm joined by my colleague, George Camel. That's with a K, by the way. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And we are uh, here for you. The phone number to jump in is 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. And George, uh, it's, it's, I always love theme hours. Uh, big fan of a here theme Here on hour. The Big Show. And uh, we've got a theme hour coming up. Tell That's us. That's right. So uh, Dave Ramsey and myself will be hosting an Entree Leadership Theme Hour. And if you don't know what Entree Leadership is, it's really Dave's teaching on business and leadership, how he built this place from a card table in his living room to the empire we see today. There's the best-selling book, Entree Leadership, that he wrote uh, a decade ago. And there's also the podcast that I've been hosting for the last year and a half. And we love helping small business owners out there. So if you have a business or leadership question, please email ask at RamseySolutions.com and put Entree Leadership in the subject line. And our team will get in touch with you to schedule a call so that you can chat with Dave Ramsey and myself very soon. That is ask at RamseySolutions.com, put Entree Leadership in the subject line, and we'll talk business and leadership. All right, there it is. Denver, Colorado is where Katie is hanging out. Katie, how can we help? Hi. Um, so my question is, my husband and I are on step two, and I am confused as how to approach that step if our budget is already using every cent. Okay. So you are, are you using every dollar or a different method? Yes. Yep. No, we use every dollar. We just signed up for the financial peace course through our church. Oh, awesome. And um, we already had a slight savings, so we bypassed step one. 
Okay. Um, so when you say so your, your income is allocated, it's every dollar's got a job. We love that. Are you? Do you have your minimum payments for each debt listed in your budget? Yes. Okay. And so we're going to look at that smallest debt we have. What's that balance on that smallest debt? 1600 And what is it? Um, it's a credit card. Okay. And so you're saying there is zero dollars extra to put onto that payment? As of right now, we did our first budget meeting this past weekend and yes. Okay. So there's nothing that you can cut. Um, I'm, I mean, I don't know. As it was of a right trick now, question. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to be tricky. So Katie, what you're really saying is there's no margin to attack this smallest debt. And so we're going to create that margin in your budget. You're not going to magically find it. And the way you do that is two ways. You spend less or you make more. And I suggest you do both. So what is your take-home pay okay. that you're using in the budget? So I um, own my own business. I just started a couple of years ago. I give myself a salary of 4800 a month. Okay. And then... My husband um, brings home eighteen hundred every two weeks. Okay, so what does he do? He works on the. He's like a mechanic for the big massage chairs. The ones in the mall. Uh yeah. Wow, oh, fascinating. All right. He first of all, let me just. I know George. I'm jumping in, and George is going to walk you got you through. Ken this. on a rant about massage chairs now. Well, like, first of all, good on you <laughs> for paying yourself forty eight hundred bucks a month on a business you just started. Let me just let me first of all let me say way to go. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Thank you. but uh, he he needs to be making more money. You can tell him I said that. So well, he, if short, he can fix a big old massage chair, well, I understand. Yeah. But if he can fix a big old massage chair in the mall, there's a lot of things he can fix. And he needs to get after it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like right now. Yeah, I think he went from a high pressure job and gone 17 days a month to now he's home. So we've kind of made compromises for that. And when I started my business two years ago, it's just taken off. So I, I, I understand. Kind of I understand. I'm going to give it back to George to walk you through the budget. But the big part of this is he needs to be making money. Okay. He needs to be making more money. You don't have to. I understand yeah. that he went from a stressful, I'm traveling. So I don't want to in any way minimize that. But there's a happy medium. Yeah. And he's yeah. only bringing home $1,800. Every two weeks. Every two weeks. Okay. But still, uh -huh. as a mechanic, he's going to be making way more money than that fixing stuff. I'm just telling you. So yeah. one of the things that will help you guys is if he's doubling his income. At least attempting to. By what are all the things he can fix? What are the skills and experience he brings to the table? And I just want to make sure you catch that because this is going to make what George is yeah. about to tell you a whole lot easier. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he went from the Marine Corps to to the oil field, so that's really all he's done his whole life. So he's got I'm plenty sure he of, skills. of skills. He's, he's very smart. Yeah. I know he is. That's why I'm believing in him. Yeah. All right. All right. So, Katie, yeah. you let's say you're taking home eighty four hundred. And what's the income side of your budget look like? I'm sorry, so my my the, the inc income or the expense? the income in your every dollar budget. What does it reflect total for both of you for the month? Um, eighty four hundred. That's what I had. Okay, so you're telling me right now there's eighty four hundred dollars in expenses going out. Yes. How yes. is that possible? You've got a mortgage. Um. Yes. What's the mortgage? It's nineteen seventy four a month. Okay. Now there's still sixty four hundred dollars left. Where is all that going? Um, so like the main ones are our mortgage, our utilities are six eighty. Then um, we have three children, so I allocate a hundred and fifty per child for their activities, school lunches, everything they need. Um, then we have one car payment because one's paid off at six hundred a month. And what's the car worth? Then, uh, I have no idea. I've never Kelly Blue booked. We've had it for three years. It's a 2017 Dodge Ram with a pickup. Do you need the pickup right now? Um, my husband thinks he does. <laughs> oh, thinks he does. Well, I'm wondering if you if you can sell it for more than it's worth and clean up this debt, that would help this process and help you clear six hundred dollars uh -huh. worth of margin to start these uh, this debt snowball. What what other debt do you have? 
um, student loans and the car and that credit card. That's and that's it. And the okay. house. What what is but the consumer debt add up to? On the debt. Um, so that was one of my questions. It's fifty six thousand total. Okay. But then I have business debt, and I didn't know if that should be included or because I keep my business separate. Is that a separate entity? Your name's on all of those documents, isn't it? Yes. So that's personal debt. So we're going to roll all of that into the debt snowball. Smallest to largest, ignore the interest rates, okay. attack the little one with a vengeance. Okay. And right now you need to create okay. that margin. And so that means he's working more, so you're working more, and go through the budget. Do a budget audit. Go through every single line item, even your insurance premiums, and go, you know, let's go shop around for the insurance premiums. And we're not eating out right now while we're doing that. So we're grocery shopping. We might switch grocery stores, buy the generic brands, start to look at every single item and go, how can I get this down by 20%, 30%, 50% to create a few extra hundred bucks to throw at the debt? Okay. So then I guess my next question is where is the balance? Because I only work four days a week because I want to and I make good money doing it. Um. But then if I work an extra day, I could bring home another 1800 a month. Heck yes. Uh, but then I don't have time with my children. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Do they know? That's not true. That is not true. Well, what do they do in the days you're working? Um, are they at school? Two of them are. So I have a 14-year-old, 12-year-old, and a 4-year-old. My well, first of all, on the days that I'm home. First of all, your 14-year-old and 12-year-old don't want to be around you as much as you think they do. Trust yeah. me, I got three teenagers. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Yeah, it has nothing yeah. to do with you. That's just called they're just weird humans at that age. Yeah. Um, so that's yeah. one thing. Secondly, I appreciate what you're saying, but this is for a season, number one. Number two, mm-hmm. you said if I work another day, I don't see him at all. That's not good math. You know that's not true. You will see him. Yeah. I mean, yeah. most parents are working five days a week, 40 hours a week anyways with commutes. And yeah. so I don't I yeah. don't see this as you being away from your kids um, much more than the average person. And it's worth it because if you do that, that cuts down your debt free time. Now it's down by six months. Get and so once you start it. doing the debt snowball calculator, you're going to get addicted. You're going to get excited. You need to get your husband on board with this to where he's going. Oh, let's sell the truck, honey. I can, we can be debt free six months faster if I sell the truck. Let's go. And then you're hanging out with the kids way more. Because you've got time, you've got options, you've got freedom, you've got margin. That's the goal with this plan. Yeah. It's doable only if you two come together and go, let's get after it for a short season, super intense. On the other side of it, life is peaceful. It's better than it's ever been before. Thank you for the call. Don't move. More of your calls right around the corner. This is The Ramsey Show. Welcome back, America, to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. George Campbell joins me this hour. The phone number to jump in is 888-825-5225. Our scripture of the day comes from Colossians 4.2. Devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving. Our quote is from Tony Dungy. Even though we can't always choose our circumstances, we can always choose our attitude in the circumstances. Uh, This weekend in the Ramsey Newsletter, we've got an article about how uh, marketing offers and one-time deals could be money traps. Well, that feels like George Campbell-inspired content there. Uh, While these big promotions may sound like a good way to save money in the moment, the word free is very tempting. It's most likely a money trap. Say it's not so, George. Oh, it's so, Ken. Some money traps may be more obvious than others, like timeshares. But some traps may be a bit more sneaky, like no money down plans. Listen, we've all been stupid with money, which is why we've listed 10 money traps for you to avoid in this weekend's edition of the Ramsey Newsletter. Simply sign up at RamseySolutions.com slash newsletter to subscribe to our Sunday newsletter to get the full list. That is RamseySolutions.com slash newsletter. It's like getting the Sunday paper. 
but yeah. it's free and in your inbox. George, did you ever? Did your dad ever get the Sunday paper? Oh yeah, I we sit. I'd sit there. I'd go through the catalogs. I'd yeah. print out coupons. It was a joy. Yeah, I will tell you that it was only about six or seven years ago that I finally got rid of my Sunday newspaper. I could see in, in the bathrobe pulling out the old paper. You know, really four enjoyed feet wide. Really enjoyed all the sections. Really enjoyed it. And I used to get the USA Today delivered to my driveway, and I would uh, slink out in the uh, in the full body length row. We don't want to offend any neighbors, and grab it. And it had all four sections. Yeah, you can't show off those chicken legs too early. Ken. No, that's, that's an HOA that's, violation. It's a bit much for anybody to handle. So, uh, but anyway, miss that. You know, when did it just become not a thing anymore? I don't know. Are there still paper boys doing their routes at four a.m.? Is I that still a thing? I don't even know if there's still a Sunday paper. It still exists. I got some research to do. Megan joins us in Tallahassee, Florida. Megan, how can we help? Hey, y'all. Hey, hey, what's up? So, so my question is, I am currently in what I thought was my dream job. And whenever I was going to school for it, I loved it. I was excelling, all that good stuff. I graduated 4.0 GPA. Um, so anyway... I'm in the job right now. I've had it for about six, seven months, and I just feel like I'm kind of going through the motions now and making, like, mistakes in my job that I shouldn't be Hmm. and just kind of feeling like, is this the job that I should have? And then on top of that, like, the company, I work for a hospital, and it just feels like they're more about, about the you know, getting money than like patient care. Well, that's probably true, sadly. What is the so, job? What is the dream job? Uh, a certified medical coder. And so this is what you went to, went to school for. You enjoyed learning and, and getting qualified for it. And for a season, you really enjoyed it. Yes. But you've only been doing it six or seven months. So I'm just, and I'm not trying to pick at you. I'm just truly curious. At what point did it become yuck and suck instead of yay? Um, I feel like maybe like two or three months ago, whenever I kept like being like, oh, yes, I can take on more work. I'll take on more work. I can do it. Aha. Uh-huh. So yes. now we figured it out. Megan, you still enjoy the work, but too much of any one thing is awful. If I ate steak every day, three times a day, it wouldn't take long for me to hate steak. Am I right? Yes. All right. So you have not created a boundary for yourself in your desire to please. You're also brand new right out of college. You've been in the job for just a few months and they keep piling Mm -hmm. on and you keep saying, yes, I can do it. Yes, I can do it. And now you're at the point where you're going, Ken, I can't do it anymore. So, Mm -hmm. all right, great. So here's the point. I wanted to get clear and you get clear on what's really going on. You don't all of a sudden hate the dream job. You aren't all of a sudden missing details because you just don't have it anymore. You're overwhelmed, sweetheart. Okay. Am I right? Yes. <laughs> I, I mean, listen, it's literally like trying to get a drink from a fire hydrant when a, when a fireman opens that thing up and that water's just streaming out. You're not getting a sip of water. It's just too much. Try not to drown, <laughs> right? Uh-huh. Yes. Okay. So here's what we have to do. You are going to have to do what very few people have the courage to do. And that is go to your leader and go, hey, I said, yes, I can do it. And I said, yes, I can do it too many times. And I went to school for this. I love this work, but this is on me. I said, yes, that I can do it. And I took off too much. I, I, in, order, in other words, I went to the buffet and I got too much food on the plate and I can't eat it. I can't do it. I need your help. Okay. How does that sound? Yes. I definitely need to do that. Now, come up with a solution. So when you go back to them, you have to say, I took on this much more work, and you know what that is. I don't. And you got to say, I need to cut back on this much. Like, I I said yes here, here, and here, and I shouldn't have. So I need to make sure we give this work to somebody else because I want to keep doing this. I want to do a good job. And they need you. You got it? Yes, got All right. it. But hey, do not be confused. This is not go get a new job because all of a sudden I don't like medical coding. This is you took on way too much and you're drowning and we need to make sure that we can uh, uh, get our head above water. Then the, the enjoyment, the love of the work will come back. All right, let's go to Bozeman, Montana. Jeff is there. Jeff, how can we help? 
Um, hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Um, I'm just calling today. Uh, I'm kind of recently new to the Ramsey method, and me and my wife have been working on it the last few months. But just recently, her dad gave us the opportunity where he wants us to buy his business, which is where I currently work. And she thinks that we need to wait longer and pay off some more debt before we do it. Um, I'm kind of hesitant and just kind of want to go for it. Uh, we, he said he will finance us himself and we'd be able to just pay him off the profits that the business makes. Um, so it wouldn't really be cutting into our current income at all. And it is a pretty successful, uh, business. So where's her hesitation coming from? Obviously she wants to pay off the debt. You're saying it's not going to affect your debt payoff goals. Uh, so part of her hesitation, she doesn't want us to be stuck with the business. And also we're expecting a baby this summer. Which Big life work. change. Now, how, yeah. how quickly is this? would this takeover happen? If you're paying them from the profits, are you owners day one? How, how does that piece work? Yeah, we would basically, we would be owners day one, and we would pay him for probably like 12 years. Are you guys ready to take on ownership and that responsibility? I'm guessing it's more time involved as well. Uh, I'm already uh, running the business. I, I just got promoted in the last couple months. So it would be a little bit more, but not a whole lot. I'm already pretty much the the head person in charge there. What's the structure of the deal? How much is it going to cost you guys, and how long will this take? Uh, It will take, yeah, about 12 years to pay off, and it's like a $5 million business. So um, So what's he charging you to, to take it? He wouldn't be charging us any interest, and so it's like... Um, like four or five hundred thousand dollars a year. Wow. So, what happens, you know, a few years from now? Let's say the profits aren't there and you still owe him millions of dollars, right? And so, that is a possibility. It is, he has ran this business for 30 years, so it is pretty consistent. But I mean, anything can happen. Um, so that is a possibility. What's the rush on doing this now? Can it be a year from now you start this process? Uh, uh, I mean, he's kind of rushing us. And then I also am just like, well, I mean, the sooner we start, the sooner we start, you know, uh, a savings account. Basically, you know, all the money that we pay into that business, theoretically, once we own it and are able to sell it, uh, that would be, you know, just more money that we would have. I mean, it sounds like it could be a good deal, but I'm worried with your pregnant wife stressing out about this and having the debt. If it's just we need to pause and look into it more and get more in writing. What do you think, Ken? I think that uh, he wants you all to have the business, and I think it's okay for you to go, you know what, can we just push this off a year and then I'm all in. Uh, I think George's advice is right, and I think he'll be fine. He's not going to force you to do this now. So just be a man. He'll be cool. Hey, George, good hour. Always fun Good show. I want to thank James and the crew behind the glass for keeping us on the air. I want to thank you, America. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, it's George Camel. If you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click on the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. That's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started.